Last time on our cross-country Peruvian food tour. What is this? Red howler monkey. Dude. Man, that's so bizarre. We entered this country's most extreme jungle meat market. In this market, everything that most of the people is eating. And now, after hiring a captain, we've arrived here. Starting from the city of Iquitos, a city of half a million that you can't even drive to. You can only get there by plane or by boat. We've gone hours down the Amazon River. Now we're in a small offshoot. Here you'll find a rich biodiversity of plants and animals, with many of them ending up on the dinner table. Out here, there's not a lot of agriculture. There's not a lot of pig pastures or cow pastures. When it comes to protein, people find whatever they can. As far as I understand, people are allowed to hunt pretty much anything they can find in the jungle. Today, I'm on a mission to learn how these off-the-grid locals deal with the harshness of nature this one is better than the other. And find food in the unlikeliest of places. We're not eating that alive, man. Oh, it's unknown. Including this exotic jungle meat, straight from the heart of the Amazon. What do you think? Are you hungry? <laughs> I don't see an armadillo. I'm like, oh, oh dinner. No. <laughs> it all starts here with the most important meal of the day. What is this? Yes. Oh, we're both very excited to be here deep in the Amazon forest. This right here is what I like to call breakfast. This little organic sack has got carbs from rice drenched in a tasty mix of oil, garlic, and achiote. But the star of the show here is the chicken, and that star is ready for his close-up. The chicken is soaked in hot water, feathered, and chopped into small pieces. In a bowl, chicken meat teams up with soy sauce, chicken stock, dried basil, garlic, achiote, cumin, and salt, all to create a flavor grenade. How do you capture the chicken? When we came here, it was already tied up like some kind of a ransom. He said he captures them at night. They are more sleepy and less, less sneaky. <laughs> sneaky. The boiled meat is rolled up in flavored rice and wrapped in banana leaves. Boil these bundles, then bring them to breakfast. This iconic Peruvian dish goes by the name Juan de Gallina. Juan in Spanish is like John. In the Bible, you, when they cut uh, John's head, this is a symbol of a head, and they usually eat it in a San John's holiday. That's really dark. This is supposed to be some guy's head. Should we open it? Man, the smells is already really good. <laughs> oh, yes. That. Let's start with the rice. Mmm, the rice is nice, it's soft, it's hot, it's savory. It tastes like a little bit of cumin, too. We haven't got to the chicken yet, but the rice is giving you hints of the chicken flavor. <laughs> right, so everybody has a random body part inside. I have like kind of the back and rib area. I have a jet to identify part of it. Part of the pecho. Ah, this is the chest. <clears throat> the chicken tastes good. You can tell it's countryside chicken. It's a little more. A little more thin, but good flavors, nice skin. And then there's one lone olive inside. Where do you get the olives from? De la ciudad. Ah, this, they need to get it from the city. Manuel and his wife Pauline have lived in this solitary corner of the world all their lives. How often are you going to the city? Cuando, a veces de dos semanas, una semana. He said depending on the need, but usually every other week, there is a scheduled boat that he needs to take, or it's around two hours to get there. And which city are you going to? Iquitos. Manuel trades his crops and chickens in the bustling city market, earning him the means to purchase household necessities. But most of the food eaten in this home comes from the bountiful offerings of this untamed jungle. He would say that 90% of what he eats is he outsources for that. Run. They get their chickens, but then to variate their fishes, and sometimes they go hunting. That's incredible. Today, Manuel will treat us to a dose of his daily diet, some of which I would not recommend if you have a weak stomach. <laughs> to start an unexpected exotic creature hunted in the dark of night. Oro, any idea? An armadillo. An armadillo. The armadillo, an extended family of 20 species that love dwelling in the warm habitats of Latin America, devouring insects and plants. Before us now, a nine-banded armadillo. Looking at it up close, it's a combination of like a rodent and a lizard. So actually, it's a smaller than a what I thought. Well, don't tell him hunt. that. He's one of the hunters. Imagine he brings something like this home and his wife no, is no, like, no, oh, I've seen bigger. My point is, for me, I thought it would be more scary. Armadillos, or armadillos, are the only living mammals that wear such hard shells. They're 
Their name in Spanish means little armored one. But that wasn't enough to stop that, whatever happened there. So how was this animal killed? What they do is they put a trap with a line and this line has a projectile. So the animal passed that line, it gets activated and shoots. Unlike its doppelganger, the highly endangered pangolin, the armadillo exists in much greater numbers, even though they're hunted throughout South America for their meat. Do these taste good? Sí, buen sabor tiene. He says that yes, he loves the flavor. It's like a liter pig. Really? Yeah. Like pork. By the end of today, we'll sit down to a two-course armadillo meal. The first thing she does is put it over hot charcoal and then she starts scaling it. But I'm told that the really thick skin underneath, that can still be eaten. Or we'll experience a once-in-a-lifetime taste of the Amazonian wild. If this kills me, I don't know. I need a helicopter evacuation. While Pauline deals with the little armored one, Manuel offers a deeper look into the wild. How often are you hunting? Ah, bueno, cuando, por ejemplo, esta es la casa cuando tenemos they prefer hunting it when the water goes up because they have less land. So they are less familiar with the habitat and they go to places where they can catch it. The 55 million year old Amazon cradles over half the planet's remaining rainforests and accommodates over one third of all known species worldwide. The armadillo is one of many sought after animals for hunters who also pursue elusive prey like agouti, the lowland paca, the collared picari, the yellow-footed tortoise, the mighty red howler monkey, and other bizarrely named creatures that we don't have in Minnesota. Not only do they have animals in the jungle, they also have animals in the water. I'm told that it's possible to catch piranhas. The ones that... That, yep. So we're gonna go fishing. What place are we not going to? We're gonna use you as bait. We are not, right? The Amazon River is the world's largest river by water volume, stretching over 4,000 miles across South America. Its murky waters conceal a stunning diversity of over 3,000 species, including tiger shovel-nosed catfish, spectacled caiman, the Amazonian manatee, the green anaconda, and the infamous piranha. The piranhas are one of the most iconic fish of the Amazon, but there's all these misconceptions, or maybe they're not misconceptions. Like, can you actually go in the water? No problem. The piranhas can bite only when it smells blood. If you don't have blood on you, you're fine. Oh no! Why don't you take a dip? I oh, can't, man. man. Of over 40 species, the red-bellied piranhas are the most aggressive towards humans. They mercilessly patrol the waters in schools that sometimes exceed 100. Facing these vicious creatures requires serious firepower. So we're bringing our Amazonian ally for backup. Have you ever heard of someone dying from a piranha attack? Two months ago, there are some uh, children, eight years. The piranha attack you, the boys die. Oh my god, I thought this was horror movie stuff. I didn't know that could really happen. All right, new plan. Neither one of us goes in the water, but today we're gonna show the piranhas our dominance. We're gonna use meat from other animals to catch piranhas. We're gonna show that we're the alpha one. I'm fine being better, man. This morning, Manuel set out a net downstream. So he's pulling up the net right now. We're hoping to catch over a dozen fish. There's already one fish in there. That'll either be eaten for dinner or get chopped into piranha bait. I'm told that the fish are going to be a little bit smaller in general. No huge ones in here, but you never know. Maybe there's an alligator trapped inside. Is that the full net? No, the dolphin broke the net. Oh, really? the Amazon dolphin. Oh, right there. Also known as the boto or pink dolphin. I just saw it. They really are pink. Is another unique creation of this river. It's fantastic and terrible at the same time. I mean, for this guy, he's lost all his fish. These freshwater mammals sport long, pointed jaws with sharp teeth that allow them to devour an expansive range of food, from common fish to hard shell crustaceans and even turtles. They also can't resist an easy, free meal. Not only do they take all the fish, but it looks like they broke the net too. Is that right? Totally destroyed. How long will it take you to fix that net. Well, we do this. <laughs> it's, uh, at least two days to fish this. Despite them eating our dinner, the dolphins are off the hook as a meal option. The main rule is never touch the dolphins. I'll find out why soon. But right now, we must focus on a piranha mission that's just gone south. So, all right, we've got one fish. Es suficiente? Mm -hmm. All right, don't be too dejected. Hang in there. Stay in the game. With flickering hope, we move to piranha-infested waters. Here, Manuel chops his small catch into bait and sets his hook. The piranha fishing has begun. It's very different from fishing that I'm used to because he's actually trying to rustle out the fish. Maybe he's trying to mimic like an animal struggling or suffering or fighting because that is what would draw blood and maybe attract piranhas in the first place. He lets it sink.
and the meat is off just like that. Piranhas are notoriously tricky because of their sharp teeth and lightning quick bites. The visibility in this water is like nothing. You can't, you can see maybe two inches down. They often snatch bait without getting hooked. And we can save some time by you just putting the hand on it. However, if you're persistent and patient, you could snag a whopping catch weighing up to four pounds. He got one. <laughs> this is a, a tiny, tiny piranha. This is another species of piranha. This one is better than the other. Pick it up, Bora. No. After hours of fishing, it's clear that Lady Luck has taken a siesta. This is our biggest piranha of the day. So it's like a snake. He kind of like pulls the lips down and that reveals these insanely sharp, small, pointy teeth. He crunched with the top ones and they integrate like this. It has like an underbite. Yeah, it does that. So even though it's this size, can we still eat this? See? Man, how many people got to say, yeah, I ate piranha. And that's a good point. We have about 10 of these. Plus, we still have that whole armadillo. Let's get off this river. The piranhas are handed over to the chef of the house. Then they're scored, gutted, and washed. Pauline tosses the fresh fish in a bowl and mixes them with salt, cilantro, cucumber, tomato, and onion. Then she wraps them in banana leaves and places the bundles on the grill. Hey. Hey, man. We have a pretty good gang here. This is my first bite of piranha ever in my life. Same. Can you show me how? Because I heard it's complicated, right? Yeah. Normally, take this back, later eat it like that. Mm. So that's the main thing. Take out the backbone. The bones are really tiny, so you need to be very careful. If the piranha kills me, even though it's already dead, I'm going to be pissed. Just letting you know. <laughs> Pretty good, man. Super soft, flaky. You can see there's a million ribs on top. So you have to kind of peel the meat off the ribs with your teeth. It has that freshwater taste. Even though it's quite tiny, so fun to eat. It's so delicious and a really unique, wonderful preparation. I don't drink, but I think this is something that you will eat if you drink alcohol. Do you guys drink out here? Hmm. Dude, look at this guy. He's 52. He looks fit AF. We look like the same age. I drink. I don't you drink. Should... Yeah, and you look young. You should take notes from us. <laughs> I'm curious, one of the main issues that we've discovered in the last video and in this one is just how precious the animals are and the resources are. Yeah. Animals going away more and more every year and probably the same with fish and seafood. Antes, hace como 10 años. You were right. Years ago, the piranhas were like three times this size. At the same time, there is a lot less fish because there is more people. And not just that, the people, they catch any size of fishes, but they need to eat fish once a week to variate the kind of protein. Are you allowed to fish wherever you want? Or are there certain territories where you can and cannot fish? The main rule of this area is never touch the dolphins. What is so important about the dolphins to you? The dolphins are the more scariest animal in the region. There is no many of them, so they really want to keep them. They also try to educate the people like, hey, look, no matter how annoying, it's their territory. They are trying to eat, you know? What he does is instead of getting mad at the dolphins, just to wash their nets so they can keep the fish. It's like trying to live in harmony. So far today, we've learned about animals on land, and we've learned about animals in the water. But there's another category of animal. There's more? There's more. It's animals inside of the tree. Right here, we have grubs. No, man, no, no, no. Just hold it for a second. Man, this feels like the guinea pig. Oh my God, they squeeze, they, they change shape. Cuando, mejor dicho, le comemos cuando. He said that this has a process. They have to cut the palm, open it a little bit, so it gets some moisture and wait for between 15 days to a month until they appear. He said he loved it and it's a really good fountain of protein. A fountain of protein? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I remember when I was boy, my mom gave me that one. I eat it alive. It's better for a flu, for a necklace. We can try it together. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I have had these raw before, but they were with fish sauce in Vietnam. This is just plain, so there's nothing to like cover up the taste. Can you go first? Hmm? Oh, why are you taking a bite out of it? Dude, that's so epic. <sighs> this yeah. side is still alive. At least eat yeah. the head first. So this is like a popcorn. The sound, man. And you finish with the head? Yeah. No big deal. Are you hearing the same sounds I'm hearing? <laughs> yeah, it sounds leathery and then crunchy at the end. I don't know if I can do this, man. <sighs> Keeps trying to bite me. It's 
tasty? I'm not enjoying it, but I'm not hating it. It tastes clean. It tastes like clean water. I can't. Man. I can't. <laughs> For example, I explained a little bit when you don't have a lot of water. He told me, imagine that you're just in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Nothing to eat. You will die if you don't eat this. All right, man. My man, that tastes huevos. You know what it tastes like? Nuts. Not that nuts. I mean, like... It tastes a bit nutty. Slightly like coconut, fresh, watery. I enjoyed that very much. That was a lie. Boom. Oro. Bam. Armadillo two ways. Course one, course two. All you can eat armadillo. After scaling, Pauline portions the armadillo using its body for the soup. While the meat is boiling, she shreds plantain and chopped cassava, tossing them into the pot along with a dash of salt. We have our first dish. It smells so peculiar to me. Do you know what it smells like? It smells like bandegi. <gasps> Yeah, Korean silkworm pupa that's been like boiling and bubbling. How do you describe that? It's like, like mothballs, like it's a little bit musty, yeah. heavy. It's an interesting smell to come from meat. Should we try some broth? Mm. <laughs> it tastes like silkworm pupa broth. Wow. That is one of the most unusual animal proteins I've ever tasted in my life. It's not like, okay, you have mouse, rat, guinea pig, and yeah. you're like, it's a little chickeny, it's a little, no. No. This is something completely all its own. You think this tastes like pork? Little mono chamuscal. Yeah, it flavors like monkey. Oh. Which we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had monkey. It's not all that pleasant. But it tastes a little bit different from monkey, to me at least. Can you eat the skin, like this armor? La parte de acá. No, you need to like grab the meat out of it. Oh, it's got a powerful pungent smell. It's soft, it's slimy, it's been stewing. All right. It tastes semi-rotten. <laughs> it does. Is this how it normally tastes? Sometimes, but normally it's more like a pork, but now it's like a, it's burning the hair. Do you like that taste? Yeah. Your voice got really high when you said yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of when I went to the Faroe Islands and I had sheep that was hanging and it was fermenting for months, maybe three, four months. It kind of tastes like that, except for this was not fermenting at all. So it makes me wonder, why does it taste like that? Am I gonna die, Liz? Everyone deserves a second chance, so it's only fair to give the armadillo another shot, this time in the form of armadillo barbacoa. The legs, tail, and head get the complete spa treatment with a salty rub down before they hit the grill. I feel like this is better. It's so different. It tastes a little bit smoked. Yeah, this tastes like smoked duck. How do we go from silkworms to smoked duck in the same animal? And this one, it smells better than the previous one. Definitely. It's like smoky, it's charcoal, it's hammy. Which one do you like more? Oh, of course, this one. Which one do you like more? El asado. Yeah, I think. But this one? Um, they would like this one. Usually, if you get something like this, would you share it with the community around you? Sí. Incluso también se las Juan. He said that he not just cherry, he also make it like a Juan, what we ate for breakfast. This place is so unique because we're so deep into the Amazon, yet right here where you live, you're part of a small community. Can you tell me about the community that exists here? Una comunidad pequeña. Mm -hmm. Porque no yeah, he say no. like it's like a small neighborhood. They don't have a lot of habitants. That's why, you know, they share everything they collect and they live in harmony and try to help each other. I know you have a child. Mm -hmm. Does your son have a school nearby here that he can go to? Sí. They have a school right there. It's like five minutes from here. You're out here in the jungle. I can see there's plenty of things to desire about this lifestyle. It's peaceful. You're living off of the land. But for your son, what would you want for his future? Would you want him to remain in the jungle or to try to find some opportunities in a more populated place? Bueno, lo que damos, este, es... He said that every day he works towards pushing his son to study well, prepare himself, and go to the city, find a life for himself. Man, what a journey. I think it's very interesting because food doesn't come only with the taste flavors. But all these meats, when you imagine them, there is a lot of thoughts in your mind. Like, they're endangered species, it's very weird to eat, why are we eating wild food? But when you experience why they eat it, how they eat it. It opens your mind and also there is a lot of questions as well, like the future of places and people who live in places like this. Right, there should be a 
story connected to the food. That's what was missing in Fear Factor. In Fear Factor? In Fear Factor, they oh. had to eat weird oh, stuff okay. and they're yeah. like, why am I eating balloon? Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. You know what makes things feel less scary? Just when they're dead. So like even a T-Rex, but dead? Mm. Ah, it's still so scary. scary. How big can the piranha get? Really? Ah, uh, he said that those big ones are more in the lakes, not in the river. In the river, you get a little big one, but to get a big, big one, go in a lake. We have about 10 of these. Should we feed them to the dolphins? Or? The dolphin not come because the dolphin doesn't eat this. Really? <laughs> yeah. The dolphin's like, you can have my leftovers, whatever I don't want, you guys can have. I think we can cook it. We'd save some time. That's awesome. a good point. Please. How much do you hate I me? I just think we should leave on time. Nothing personal. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> personal? <laughs> this is supposed to be some guy's head. That's in the Bible? Yes. I don't think I got to that part. The Bible got a little bit slow, one oh. third of the way through. Like this guy begat this guy, and this guy begat this lady. There's a lot of begatting. I couldn't keep going. I should have, because obviously it got a lot more exciting. Decapitations and so on. Boom, guys, that is the end of the Peru series. Pretty amazing. We went to the coast, and then we went to a very high mountain area. Finally, we came here to the rainforest and ate some true, true rainforest food. Very true. I want to say a huge thank you to my man Oro right here. Handshake. Wow. I put him through the ringer. I said on the first day I brought him here so I could torture him. And I think I maybe tortured myself in the end as well. <laughs> <laughs> man, I think I did pretty good. You did great. <laughs> you can check out Oro right here on Instagram. Here's his handle. Check out his fun adventures in Miami and beyond. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching the Peru series. We'll see you next time. Peace. I'm going to go vomit. <laughs>